Now, when Trump was first elected, you said in an interview that some Chinese executives would embrace a Trump win, believing Trump stands for entrepreneurship, pragmatism and a business profit-driven mentality, while others might fear this would hurt China-U.S. trade relations. It's been a few months. Have your views changed in that time? Are you generally optimistic or pessimistic about the future of U.S.-China ties in trade and investment? Well, um, since uh, Mr. Trump was uh, elected as the next uh, U.S. president, I think uh, that has cast quite a lot of uncertainty on the future relationship between the U.S. and China, and certainly from the standpoint of trade and investment, and also how um, you know, the Chinese companies will be doing in America, and vice versa for U.S. companies to do in the China market. So I would characterize this as a period of a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Now, Trump promises to dismantle globalization. However, you, are you have said that you are convinced that Trump will learn a Chinese lesson on how isolationism never works. What gives you the confidence that he will learn this lesson? Well, it's very hard to say that now, you know, uh, Mr. Trump will learn from the lessons. Uh, but we have known for, for a long time throughout the history that any country or any economy who has chosen to adopt isolation and not to open itself to the rest of the world, uh, those are the countries that will ultimately suffer from, uh, from what they, they do. So I would expect, you know, if uh, Mr. Trump indeed tried to isolate the U.S. from uh, many other parts of the world, including China, that perhaps, you know, is going to create damage the overall economic development of the U.S. rather than to really help the U.S. to grow. Mm -hmm. Do you think he will actually take that route? I mean, it's in, impossible to imagine that he doesn't know, doesn't understand the potential consequences. Um, it's, yeah, it's hard to understand it. At the same time, you know, it's, it's also how he got to where he is today through this kind of rhetoric. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of support by, you know, at least a major part of the Americans that this is what they, they like to see. But it remains to be seen whether or not once he, you know, get uh, to the president position mm -hmm. and once he begin the execution of the policies, whether or not this will really happen. Because, as you know, uh, in a system like the U.S. political system, there's actually quite a bit of checks and balance. So while the presidents have a lot of executive power, at the same time, there's also quite a lot of uh, check and balance in the system. It remains to be seen. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, he has indeed um, created posts to put people um, that, he, that share his point of view into position. For instance, Peter Navarro, who will be the head of Trump's National Trade Council. It's a completely new post. What do you have to say about his uh, many accusations? Peter Navarro's accusation that China devastated America's manufacturing sector, manipulated its currency, and created an unequal playing field. Yeah, um, you know, Mr. Navarro's uh, point of view, uh, you know, are quite uh, well uh, demonstrated through his uh, books and uh, his uh, the writings, as well as um, you know the videos that he prepared and so on. Uh, I think by now he's probably the most uh, well talk about book is the, this book called Death by China, which was published in 2011. Um, if we look at you know some of the, the points that he was trying to make in that book, you know I would say that quite a lot of the acquisitions that he was making during that time was either the, not quite appropriate, nor certainly not up to date. And in fact, as you may know. In a recent article by the Wall Street Journal, uh, uh, the, the author of the article in Wall Street Journal have characterized uh, Mr. Navarro's point of view as hyperbolic and outdated. And I agree with that point of view. But unfortunately, he's, in, he's put into such a high position, and we don't know what the, the National Trade Council will do, but likely he's going to help shape Trump's uh, trade policy with China. Uh, what can we expect from, this, uh, from any future policies coming out of this, uh, the, the Trump administration? 
Yeah, again, you know, remains to be seen, you know, but I if we look at, um, you know, the, the, the people that Trump has put into this kind of relative uh, respective positions, uh, one would expect that the, the policies, the trade policies would be uh, pretty tough against, uh, against China. Uh, that would be the normal expectation for now, but I think it remains to be seen exactly what will happen. Mm -hmm. Now you said Chinese entrepreneurs can help Trump make America great again. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, you know, uh, our, our experience uh, working with um, quite a large number of Chinese businessmen as they were looking at how they want to expand the business, inevitably, you know, quite a number of them are interested in uh, going overseas including investing in the in the US uh, many of them are actually quite intrigued by the opportunities that you know the US market brings to them mm -hmm. and uh, you know in our point of view when we look at the the intentions of many of these Chinese entrepreneurs uh, if they go to America make investments build plans uh, they're going to create jobs the you know uh, also the especially the the kind of manufacturing jobs that uh, Mr. Trump was talking about especially in the Rust Belt of, of the U.S. So we believe that there is actually a good case where the Chinese entrepreneurs can actually help uh, the cause of Donald Trump if he wants to create a large number of jobs back in America. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that the opportunity indeed is huge as we have seen the kind of uh, growth rate of uh, U.S.-China business and, and uh, uh, trade cooperation over the past decade. However, on the other hand, Trump has uh, some very hawkish rhetoric concerning China. For instance, he threatened to challenge China's red lines, in particular the One China policy and the South China Sea, putting the political relationship between China and the United States in great uncertainty. Do you think a business can thrive given this kind of political uncertainty? Of course, the political uncertainty would cast a lot of, you know, shadow over businesses. But at the same time, uh, you know, businesses are businesses. You know, if a or if a number of Chinese entrepreneurs decide to go to America and make investments, they're gonna, you know, create jobs in America. I just, I just don't see why the U.S. will not welcome that. Uh, you know, as long as these investments will not infringe on what the Americans view as uh, national security interests. If it's not about national security interests, it's about you know, pretty uh, basic or hardcore manufacturing, uh, why not? Why, what, why, why is it not good for America? So you know, while the political uncertainty certainly will cast quite a bit of doubts in the relationship between the, the two countries, uh, on the working level, at the investment level, it makes a lot of sense actually for the two countries to collaborate. And it's also very interesting to see the timing of Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Switzerland. He gave two speeches, one in Davos, one to the United Nations in Geneva, and these all happened just days before Trump taking office. She outlined his position in a clear manner as a champion of globalization. He did not mention Trump in his speeches, both in Davos and in Geneva, but it was more than clear to whom he was talking. Do you think Trump will have heard his messages and continue pushing for free trade and globalization? Uh, I'm sure Mr. Trump would have heard uh, President Xi's speech and the points that Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Xi uh, was trying to make uh, in terms of uh, the push or the support for globalization. I hope Mr. Trump would, 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 would take note of these uh, major points and would hopefully this will uh, influence his ultimate decisions on what to do. I really hope so. Thank you very much, Edward Xie, CEO of Gaofeng Advisory, joining us live from Hong Kong.